A bit of excitement in the wood shop today. I uh, went out and got some free wood. Bunch of scrap plywood. It's uh, really weird dimensions. It's 14 mil. I think it was a packing crate or something. I'll be able to use that for the shelving up there. That's the project I'm working on this weekend. And those scraps will come in handy because the only other ply that I have at the moment is the ply that I got from Wayne. Which I thought was 12mm but it turns out is only 9mm. So I'm going to use a combination of this. Maybe doubled up to make it thicker. And that stuff in the car which is doubled up to 25mm or I'll just use it at its weirdo dimension of 14mm. And just like that I changed my mind. I decided to use this wood for my Paul Sellers plywood workbench instead. So we'll abandon that plan of building shelves and we'll get on with building a workbench. So I'll start this video off with a little tour of the workbench. And I'm going to show you uh, its features and uh, explain some of the anti-features and uh, some of the difficulties and some of the joys of building this damn thing, I mean this beautiful thing. So that video of that plywood you saw me gathering up uh, from that wrecker's yard and uh, removing all the nails and staples, that was back in February this year and that was used for the work surface here and I tell you, it almost went in the bin more than once. This plywood is absolute garbage. I'll show you what it looks like close up. And this is probably a good time to talk about what this workbench is and what it isn't. This plywood, uh, when I got it, had quite a nice veneer on it. But uh, once I cut into it for the first time, I realized what I was dealing with. It seems to be alternating layers of asbestos and flour and water. Every time I cut it and inhaled some of the dust, I think I developed a new form of cancer. But uh, anyway, I went ahead and used it and I followed along with the Paul Sellers plan and his excellent video series on how he made his his workbench and of course I had a few uh, challenges along the way um, the main one was that when I was gluing these strips up they were really deformed to begin with they had a huge bow uh, probably over the length of this which is about 1700 mil I guess uh, that's about uh, 1700 mil just for the okay it's going on for about five and a half feet and they had a bow from from the end the bow would have come out to here 
I'm not kidding. When I glued them up and put them all together with clamps, that bowing pressure made them slip and I ended up with a big uneven mess. So what I decided to do was to glue up the sections here in six inch uh, groups so that I could put them over my six, in six inch jointer and uh, just flatten off the, the uneven layers and of course that didn't go well that uh, ended up giving me a wedge on my, uh, on my piece over the length of this and I tried to hand plane that out and that was a job and a half I tell you I didn't get there in the end but I came up with other solutions after I nearly threw this whole thing in the bin anyway I'll get more into that into, into, the, into detail on that on another video and um, I'll show you some of the other things so I ended up here with about two and a half inches thick down from uh, probably three and a half I had to cut off a whole heap to flatten it out and I've got my record 52E vise on the front uh, installing that was interesting because my apron here is really thick uh, it's about uh, two laminated thicknesses of two by material so we're looking at about four inches or a hundred mil thick and I've got the vise mounted to a recess that I cut out uh, in here it's not actually mounted on the work surface proper it's mounted on the bottom of the apron so that was a pretty interesting install job uh, you might notice this pink tinge on the front of the apron here I just used a regular uh, 2x6 material and okay it's a bit pink um, but you know nothing wrong with pink I guess one of the highlights for me is the legs the legs came out really nice I think and I'm just using 2x4 laminated together I really like how these tenons came out so the uh, it's the rails across here are plywood and uh, got these tenons going through uh, and rounded off that way and that way and I'm really happy with the way they came out that gap there is a bit a bit wide because uh, I actually rounded off that uh, top of that tenon a little bit too close to the uh, side here but I was really pleased with the um, the mortise cutting that went that was difficult but went really well there's the uh, plywood stretcher uh, rail another one up the top and uh, I'll do a little video on on making these uh, I deviated from the Paul Sellers plan in that I didn't use plywood for the legs and uh, therefore I had to cut my own mortises and cutting through mortises this thick and this high um, is a real challenge in itself Anyway, I'll get into more detail on that in a little detailed video that I'll put out. One thing that I think is pretty cool about this bench here is the uh, the tool well at the back. You can just have all your tools down there and they're not going to roll away and fall on the floor. And this is going to be my first time using a workbench with a tool well. And I know it's going to get full of dust, but I have my shop vac with a long hose. Not going to be a problem to clean it up. 
and I'm pretty good with putting tools away so you know so the design brief here was to get uh, myself a nice solid workbench and I achieved that and I needed space to put my uh, things that I already had so I had my thickness down there and I have my kind of my tool chest and my hardware storage um, cabinet thing uh, below it I had to modify that that used to have a have a top on it which I had to take off because it was too thick with the uh, the quick release quick release mechanism of the vice here uh, so I'm still kind of um, thinking about what to do about this uh, this big steel cabinet here it needs new wheels because one of the wheels is locked up and I'm gonna do some work on that and uh, my plan all along has actually been to make this area into a router table with a router mounted up underneath there so uh, that's still on the cards uh, So that was an intro to my workbench. I'm uh, I'm back on the road now, and I'm going off to get some materials for my next project. And uh, I'm really quite excited to have a decent workbench to work on. I've got a proper vice, uh, and I've got a flat surface, wide enough, and it's uh, at the perfect height for me. And I, I haven't spent a lot of money on it. I've um, kept costs down pretty low uh, by getting that free plywood from that place and um, I just think it's turned out pretty cool it's not uh, the beautiful thing that uh, maybe it looks like on Instagram um, and you know in the future maybe I'll work on building something that is truly awesome and wonderful and fantastic and uh, that I'll keep for the rest of my life but this one uh, is just going to be it's going to be great for uh, the next couple of years or three or four or five years, I don't know how long, and I'm pretty happy to have it. So, hope you guys uh, will uh, stick around for the future videos that I put out. They'll be, I don't know, the next week or two. Um, and just highlighting a couple of the uh, parts that were difficult about this build and. Uh, some of the parts that went well and didn't go so well and that were, were interesting. So I'm in a big traffic jam here so I'm going to have to pause. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson.